You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to a really special episode of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And before we get into our wine taste tonight, I want to give a special thanks to West Hartford Television's gala at Town Hall last Saturday, Jim. We had a great time. We man. had a great time, which we uh, served a lot of nice selections of wine and everybody had a great time. A lot of uh, money was raised, a lot of glasses were lifted. And I think everybody had a great time. Yeah, and we found a couple of great new wines we'll be featuring on a future episode. So thanks, thanks to all the guinea pigs for trying yeah, that with so us. Yeah, so once again, <laughs> thanks for everybody that showed up. It was a great success. Everybody had good food, good wine, good times, and a lot of fun. And number two, we are celebrating our one-year anniversary today, Jim. And gone by so fast. It has gone by <laughs> fast. And uh, I did some quick calculations, and I think we have tasted about 45 bottles glasses or bottles of wine since we started. I know somebody in our audience is going to fact check this and write us an email next month saying, no, you were wrong. It was 47 or 43 or... I could have been off a couple, but I, I got to think that that's pretty close. So uh, we don't have a glass, but no, cheers, cheers, Jim. <laughs> and we'll get to that later on. And number three, by the time you see this show, it's going to be Thanksgiving time. So today's show is, it's Thanksgiving time, time to have some wine. And that's what we're going to be doing today, tasting wine that will pair well with Thanksgiving food. Right. Everything on the table tonight is going to pair with one dish and hopefully most of the meal at Thanksgiving. And that's such a complicated meal to pick a wine for. Typically what happens is uh, there's, you know, there's turkey, there's stuffing, there's gravy, cranberry, uh, pearl onions, as well as in some kind of vegetable. I mean, it's just a wide variety of flavors and tastes. And not to mention the turkey, which has the white meat and then the fattier dark meat. Uh, which both fatty in texture and taste. How do you pick one wine to go with all that? Very difficult. It is very difficult. And even though turkey is a meat, and even though the dark meat can be considered a, a heavier meat, it's tough to pick a red that goes with a turkey sometimes. It is. It really is. And I, we're going to show you five different wines tonight that will work with all that. Um, I'm going to say if you're going to buy just one wine, go with a sparkling wine or a champagne, uh, a Spanish cava or an Italian prosecco. Typically, that will hold up well with just about everything you're serving for Thanksgiving. But we're going to be a little more adventurous tonight. We're going to try five different wines um, that will work with most of the meal. And if you want to uh, do like we do, you can serve a white and a red with the meal. That way you give your guests some kind of uh, option with whatever they're eating. Yeah, I think the option is a big deal, especially for my family and friends that come over. Some people like a white, some people like a red. But as we always try to do, at least I always try to do when different people come over, I try them to taste a lot of different things. And we actually tried to do that at the gala. We're going to be tasting a wine shortly that I really tried to push that night, but people were still afraid of it for <laughs> some reason. You. They fought me on it. They did. But we'll talk about that in a little while. And um, I think one of the first wines we'll be tasting tonight, which is I've always been a big fan of a Riesling. It's not always easy to drink a Riesling sometimes because you never know what you're going to be eating with it. But They tend to be sweet, and people are afraid of the sweetness. They're afraid of uh, having too much of kind of a sticky, syrupy thing going on in their mouth. And um, the one we have tonight is going to be a big surprise. So let's yes. go ahead and Yes, it's called Little Black Dress. It is a California vineyard. They are, this is available locally, and they have a lot of different varietals. But this is a really popular one and highly rated one. So we will try this right now and see how it affects our taste buds. You're right about uh, Riesling. Sometimes they can be very sweet, though not as sweet to me as a Chardonnay. I, I get a little floral note off of this, but very it's not nice. overwhelming. Not, not, not overwhelming at all. Wow. Great body. You know, yeah, you'd expect this to be kind of watery or weak. 
This actually has some structure to it. It sure does. It's also a little effervescent. I, as soon as it hit my tongue, I got a little effervescence. I got that same thing. Yeah, just a little bit of a kind of a bubbling sensation on the tongue. Very crisp. And a little bit of honey. Yeah, I will say honey to me is one of the more predominant flavors in this, at least from my taste buds, which I like. I love honey. Obviously, you don't want to drink a jar of honey. No but it's subtle enough to still make it very crisp and very refreshing. Yeah, and this would go well with the mashed potatoes, um, the stuffing, um, and, and the turkey for Thanksgiving. And I, I, we should point out Riesling, Jim, I don't know if we've discussed a Riesling before, but should that be slightly chilled or cold like a Pinot Grigio? Yeah, you want this cold. This is in the Pinot Grigio temperature range, uh, about 48 degrees. Got to finish this little sip. I never checked the legs on this, but... I was looking at the glass now. It, there's still some left. There's still some. You finished that yeah. glass and there's still something clinging to the, the inside there. So it's a great body. I would also say you could probably also serve this as maybe as an aperitif or a... Yeah, you do this before the meal. Uh, you could do this after the meal. The only thing I wouldn't do uh, is pair this with um, pumpkin pie or pecan pie. Those are going to be too sweet for this wine. Good um, point. Honestly, everything we're trying tonight, you probably want to skip for the dessert phase of the meal maybe move to coffee, uh, or if you have a port, uh, that, that would go well with pecan pie and pumpkin pie. Did he just say coffee? I can't believe it. I said don't drink wine. <laughs> we'll let you slide on that one. So I got to say that that's been, that was a very big surprise for me. Um, I've heard a little about Dress Vineyards. I know they made a good Riesling. I've never tried it until tonight. I liked it. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Definitely thumbs up on this one. So Mr. Turkey and Mr. Riesling will go good together. Absolutely. Along with some of the other food in there. So. Now we come to the one that I tried to push at the West Harford Gala on Saturday. It is a French Malbec Rosé, which I think probably scared some people when they hear Malbec Rosé. Yeah, people don't want to drink rosés, and I, I don't know why. They've, they made a big resurgence recently, the last uh, three, four years. Um, they've got a lot of interesting notes to them, uh, the, the aroma, the flavor. Let's go ahead and pour this one and see what we get out of this. But yeah, and which is surprising because it's the Malbec grape. Yeah. And I was sure that people, since we were serving a Malbec that night, that there'd be a lot of... Everybody drank the Malbec. They kind of shied away from the rosé. Nice clear color. A little bit of a sweet aroma. But mild. And just like when we tasted it the other night, I find this to be very neutral. Nothing really jumps out at me. That's a perfect word, neutral, which is why some of these wines are going to be great to pair for Thanksgiving because you need a neutral wine for some of the food groups. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like with a cranberry, you know, cranberry's got such a, uh, not a pungent taste, but it, you know, it's, it's a very strong flavor. Uh, you want something that's not going to clash with that. I think this would work well with the, you know, the, the cranberry, the stuffing, um, a gravy that's got a lot of flavor to it. Yeah, this is not going to overpower anything. No. And it's not complex, but I think there's just enough character in this particular wine to give you something to talk about. I think uh, people are going to taste it and say, it's interesting. It's an interesting rosé. What can you tell me about it? And the fact that it's a French Malbec rosé, I think in, is, in itself something that is kind of interesting. Yeah, and it's versatile enough that it will pair with just about everything on the table for Thanksgiving. So I, I, I'm going to give this one a thumbs up also. And this is another one that I think for rosé, should be served not too cold though, right? Rosé is not cold, cold. Uh, yeah, that's it's in between. Um, I'm going to say around 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Because mm -hmm. I think if this was too cold, you would probably wouldn't taste You'd much of anything. You'd start to lose some of the, the structure, yeah. So, and what's the price point on this one, Bob? This is $9.99, roughly, depending on where you buy it. Could be a little higher, could be a little lower. But I think for that price point, I think it's another phenomenal example of the quality of wine that you can get at a reasonable price that will impress your family and friends. Yeah. Yeah, it's at the, for that price, this is a very good buy. I'm, I'm going to recommend this. And once again, I, I'm still surprised that as hard as I tried to push that on Saturday night, <laughs> um, just people were a little shy about it. We have to just start serving more rosés. We'll do a whole rosé show. One I day tried to drink some over the summer, but uh, I don't think we tasted any rosés over the summer. Did we on any of the shows? We had, we had a sparkling rosé. We did have uh, a sparkling rosé. Jordan rose. brought. Yep. That was Gerard Bertrand, I believe. Yeah. Which was, oh, no, that was, Louis Pedrer. That was excellent. Say. So, yeah, I agree with you on this one. Another thumbs up. Um, phenomenal value, good taste, and will go very well with, once again, everything that you're serving that day. All right, our next wine is a Chardonnay. Uh, we have not tried this yet, 
And actually, um, this is know, our first Chardonnay. This, this is our first Chardonnay on the show. Bob and I are not big Chardonnay fans. Uh, for Thanksgiving, you don't want a Chardonnay that has a lot of oak or a lot of butter because that's going to clash with everything on the table. So I tried to pick something that was a little more neutral, kind of like the rosé we just had. It was just going to sit in the background, uh, not really clash with anything on the table. And we'll see if I succeeded. I have faith in you, Jim. <laughs> a lot of legs on that. It is a good flavor. There's a lot of character in this particular Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. It's not overly buttery, which no. sometimes I have a problem with. I know sometimes California Chardonnays can be a little... It's like a huge stick of butter. Not this one, though. But this is, uh, this is more like... Uh, it reminds me almost of popcorn. You know, it's Interesting. Just That's... a hint of butter in the background. You know, it's funny because uh, I know we've sort of shied away in doing a, actually tasting any Chardonnays. I thought we would get to some in the summertime and spring, but we never did. So it's still going to be an upcoming show. Yeah, that's your preference and my preference. And, uh, and again, go, to go back to my rule of thumb, drink what you like. So you know, we're going to recommend five really radically different wines tonight. If you don't like any of them, uh, just fall back to what you normally serve uh, when you're having guests over and, and pair that with your Thanksgiving meal. But remember Jim's advice. Uh, drink what you like, but at least don't be afraid to taste something you haven't right. tasted. Yeah, try it before you buy it. So if uh, Don't shy away from it like they did on Saturday <laughs> with the rosé because they didn't know what it was. Try it. I'm sure you'll like it. And if you don't, you can at least say I gave it a shot. Yeah. So have you, you said this is the first time you've tasted this. This is the first time I've here. tasted this one. Um, I had another one. It was, uh, this is called the Divining Rod. This is an excellent, excellent Chardonnay. It's uh, very neutral. It does not have um, anything that jumps out at you. You know, I'm getting a hint of butter with the, the Catina that we're drinking right now. Uh, the Divining Rod, I didn't get anything at all. And so I, I, would, I would recommend this one for Thanksgiving as well. Um, but the, the Catina... Is that another is actually, California vineyard? That's another California vineyard. I believe that's Mondavi. It's amazing that, uh, you know, Chardonnay, uh, once again, I go back to Saturday night. I think that was our biggest hit of the evening, the Chardonnay, wasn't it? Was that one of yeah, the ones that... Yeah, a lot of people were drinking the Chardonnay. And Merlot, the... things that people are familiar with, mm -hmm. Merlot, Chardonnay, you know, it's a lot of times that's what people like to stick to. And um, this is another example of a Chardonnay can be good, but once again, try different things. Try it all, yeah. That's how me and Jim became me and Jim. <laughs> and you guys have a lot of wine. But I'm going to... I know we give thumbs up, thumbs down, and sideways. And a half thumb. Mine's going to be like a half thumb up. I might go back to that later okay. and see if I change my and mind. I think that just speaks to the fact that you don't drink a lot of Chardonnays. And I don't either. This, this would not be my first choice for a Thanksgiving wine, but I would certainly drink this for the entire meal. Well, here's my only problem, and I'm not saying it is a problem with Chardonnay. Um, if you don't drink this within a few moments, say, and there's still some in the glass, if you put it down, if you go back to pick up the Chardonnay, if it's warm, sometimes I find a warm Chardonnay almost undrinkable. Right, yeah. And that's a problem yeah. I have with some white wines, that if they get room temperature, they're really bad. It's because they're so heavy. I want them to be very, very cold. But there are some Chardonnay-like wines that I have had at room temperature that I still enjoyed very much. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, the Catina is in the $10 to $15 price point range. Um, it's a good buy. Available locally? It's available locally. And uh, that came from Super Cellars in uh, Avon. All right, for the next two wines, I'm actually going to break our rule. Normally, we try and drink wines that are under $20. Uh, the next two are in the $20 to $25 range. It's a holiday. But that's exactly Splurge. what I thought. I said, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Spend a little bit more. I'm not doing $60 wines here. Although this next one, uh, we're going to try this. this. This drinks like a $60 wine. Uh, this is the Miomi Pinot Noir. I have found this to be a very complex wine. Beautiful I've, color. I've served this. Oh, yeah. Very dark. Almost ruby. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Absolutely Phenomenal gorgeous. color. Great body. Very mild aroma. Mm-hmm. You get some kind of uh, cola notes with this. Oh, sweet chicken vindaloo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is good. This is a great wine. It changes in your mouth two or three times, and that's that to me indicates a very complex wine, uh, something I would want to drink over and over and over again. And that's why I keep coming back to the Miomi Pinot Noir. You know, it's fascinating what Jim just said, because well, we have had other wines, but this one in particular, um, I think the best comparison is we had um, Tony on doing the Italian wine show. There's still things going on in my mouth right now. Right. 
Yeah, the finish just keeps going and going and going. And it's good. It's not yeah. a bad finish. It's like there's nothing harsh. There's nothing acidic. No, nope. I'm getting a little vanilla now, now that it's lingering. It's, it's phenomenal. And how were you exposed to this one? I actually found this at uh, Max Downtown. Really? And they, they claimed that they had the exclusive distribution on this wine, that you couldn't get it anywhere else. And uh, so I kept going back to Max downtown over and over again to have a glass of this. And then um, just happened to see it in the wine store one day and thought to myself, I, I felt like I'd lucked out, but won the lottery. I just, I bought uh, quite a few bottles that day and I've been serving them ever since. And it's, well, it's like you said, when you get to a price point, maybe that's a little higher. Um, and that's not always the case. We've actually had some wines that were complex in a lower price point. Mm -hmm. But this is an example where you can, you can taste what you're paying for a little bit. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And it's, it's not like you're paying a whole lot for it either. It's, uh, you know, like I said, 20 to $25. This particular bottle I actually got for just under $20. Um, but I know somebody. So. Well, I think uh, <laughs> the next new year, you know, our second year of doing this show, we might occasionally throw a little bit more expensive bottle in the mix just to mix it up just a little to, yeah. bit. You know, we figure our listeners are getting a little bit more sophisticated and uh, what they like. And um, even though the concept of our show is still going to be wines under twenty dollars, because I think that's what most people enjoy, we'll throw an extra bottle in there that's a little it. higher price point, we and um, I think that'll be enjoyable because this is really, really good. Now, something like this would pair well with both the white and the dark meat on that turkey. Absolutely, yeah. Now, are you a proponent of, depending on how big your family is? Would you have a glass of white and a glass of red if you could do it on your table? Absolutely, I'd do both. And I'm not ashamed. I, uh, I've seen them do it. Red and white, and I like to try both wines with everything on the plate just to see how they're gonna interact with the food. And it slows and the meal down. It does. People tend to eat so fast at the holidays. You, put, you go through all the trouble of cooking, all the trouble of putting it on the table, and before you know it, it's gone. Yeah. Um, when we have holidays or any type of celebration, I like to, like you say, drink wine, maybe have two different types of wine on the table, drink a little bit of the wine, talk about it, and eat the food at the same time. It slows the meal down, which is healthier for you, and you get more enjoyment out of everything on the table. Absolutely. And that's what Thanksgiving is all about, enjoying the food. As long as we don't have any bad weather during Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, this is definitely a big thumbs up, Jim. i got to say I'm really pleased with that. That's really, really nice. I could spend the rest of the show drinking just, just this. I'd... <laughs> I could see that happening, actually. Do a whole half That would hour be an interesting Mione. show. Actually, I should tell our viewers that uh, in the near future, we, uh, me and Jim will be doing a show with uh, Mr. Science, who oh, that's right. very generously asked us to be on his show and talk about the science of wine and maybe some interesting things that we didn't know that Mr. Science will know. So keep an eye out for that show. But, uh, That'll be fun because we're going to get into the wine making process and see what happens during fermentation. Uh, we, we delved a little bit into that when we did our champagne special. Oh, that's right, we did. Uh, but I'm sure Mr. Science is going to get behind all the, uh, intera the chemical interactions that are going on. I sense some so. gimmicks and some explosions taking place. He loves blowing show. stuff up, doesn't he? He does. So. <laughs> but Jim, thumbs up on this one. All Fantastic. Right, thank you. What's all our right. next gem? This is the Gerard Old Vine Zinfandel. And a lot of the information that you find, if you're looking online for good pairings for Thanksgiving, most people try and steer you away from something heavy like a cab or a Zinfandel. Correct. Uh, but then there, there is a school of thought that says you can go the complete opposite direction and do a Zinfandel pairing with your Thanksgiving meal. So we're going to try this right now. I have served the Old, Ger uh, old Vine Gerard on uh, several occasions. I think I have actually had it, but it's been a while, it's, so... It's I, been a regular in my wine cellar, and I love this one. But uh, we'll see how this goes with uh, Thanksgiving. You know, before we even drink that, I mean, camera probably can't pick it up as well, but that is a beautiful, dark, ruby color. Yeah, and look at the legs. Phenomenal legs on this. And um, I'm, I love Zinfandels. I think uh, we've actually had a Zinfandel recently. I think a Black Ridge Zinfandel, which mm -hmm. I think you liked a lot. I love that one. That and great. for those of you who, when you hear the word Zinfandel, you think of, you know, the old school. The white Zinfandel. White Zinfandel. Yeah. Okay. No, this, yeah. is, this is something completely different. Completely different. Yeah, and the, the white Zinfandel tends to be very sweet. I would say cloyingly so. And it's, uh, it's actually an entry-level wine for a lot of people. It's the first wine they ever have, and that's what gets them drinking wine. Uh, but the red Zinfandel, so much more complex. Look at that. I get a lot of smoke just on the nose. It doesn't disappoint. You know, I, I really love red Zinfandels. 
Now, compared to everything else we've had tonight, this is a much heavier wine. It is much heavier. Yeah, we should say right off the bat, but not heavier in a cloying kind of no. sticks to your esophagus going down type of no. way. And this will still go well with turkey, um, the mashed potatoes, gravy, stuffing. I, I don't see a problem with this. Um, the cranberry might throw you off a little bit, and that's, that's going to throw off most of the wines that we've presented tonight. And the infamous cranberry. The, uh, I think the rosé would go well with the cranberry. Um, and you could probably get away with the Riesling yeah. with the cranberry. It, the cranberry's tough because I know there are some vineyards, even in Connecticut, that do a cranberry-based wine. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, I think, uh, I actually like a cranberry juice, but a cranberry wine, even a, as a liqueur, to me, is a yeah. little overpowering. But do you have, um, for your Thanksgiving meal, do you do cranberry sauce or do you cranberry relish? You it's more of, of a jelly type thing. A jelly thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm not actually a big proponent of the jelly. I like a cranberry juice. Yeah. But the cranberry jelly, so I'm a little on the weird side. But uh, and my family actually makes a cranberry relish, which is kind of it's uh, the raw cranberry chopped up and then oh, yeah. some other ingredients yeah. added in there. So, yeah, I mean, you're getting all of the cranberry when you when you eat it like that. You know, Thanksgiving is one of those fascinating holidays where there are so many unique individual foods that are on the table. Yeah. It's almost impossible to put everything on your plate. Unless you take small portions of I, I either I either take small portions and just go back three or four times or uh, sometimes get two plates. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way to do it. This is really good. I must say that um, it's been a while since I had this, either at the last dinner party we had or at your house, I can't remember. But I would definitely say uh, I think our viewers would really enjoy this particular Zinfandel. I love it. If, if I were to put together a list of all-time greatest wines I've had, this would definitely be in the top of that list. This is uh, this is a wine I keep going back to time and again. And price point? Again, 10, uh, 20 to twenty-five dollars. Uh, so it's just a little bit more than we like to spend on this show, but not a whole lot more. And at that price point, I think you're getting to the point where you know if you like something like that, you can buy a few bottles and sell it for a few years. Absolutely. Yeah, you could you could definitely set this down for a little while. And uh, I wanted to say uh, uh, I have to give a shout out to Melissa Hebert out there in Cleveland, um, Old Central alumni. I want to thank you for watching uh, us online, by the way, and I hope you have a good Thanksgiving and try some of these wines. I know I get a lot of feedback from you occasionally on Facebook, and uh, I think you'd like all these on the table here. But um, well, and Bob, you bring up a good point. Um, if you if you are following us on Facebook, please friend us. Uh, you can send us a message through Facebook that way. Uh, if you have a question you want us to address on the show here, uh, we'd be happy to tackle that for you. Um, you can like us or friend us or share us or do all three on Facebook. Uh, and then um, you can also watch previous episodes of our show on whctv.org or on youtube.com. Which I would advise you to do because some of you might want to correct how many bottles I said we've actually consumed. <laughs> I guarantee over somebody's the last gonna year. send that in. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was thinking back uh, when we first did this show, I think our first show was, well, I think we did, uh, Spanish Wines was our first show and I, I remember watching the show recently and saying, wow, that's a little stiff there, Bob. You know, you don't seem quite as comfortable <laughs> in front of the table as you do now. And uh, yeah, it's you know, it's, it, 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 we grew into the role pretty well. <laughs> and, um, and I think our second show actually was the Champagne Show. That was the Champagne Show. And uh, it's going to be very exciting, our next Champagne Show. That, we're, that's next month. We'll and we are actually together. going to have a real Champagne for you. I know we talked about what you can call Champagne. And bubbles, but I actually found a champagne that's reasonably priced. That's actually from France. From France, right. and is a champagne. So you have to stay tuned for that one. So when I finish this, I'm going back to that Chardonnay because I want to see if it still has some. Still, uh, if it holds up. If after it holds all this. up. All right. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Donna from West Hartford. Uh, she approached me just the other day and said she was a big fan of the show, and I just wanted to thank you for for supporting us. And hopefully, uh, you're enjoying some of this for Thanksgiving. Thanks for everybody for supporting us. You know, we, we do this show because we enjoy it and also because our friends and viewers like you out there right now comment and enjoy watching us. And um, we know we, we take this show both seriously and lightly. We like to drink. We like to talk about it. And um, we we're, we're just trying to share all the knowledge we've accumulated over the last 20 years of drinking wine. So. And our love of the vine. Yes. Our love of the vine. <laughs> So do you have any exciting uh, events coming up yourself for the holidays? Well, the, for, for Thanksgiving this year, I'm actually going to host both sides of the family for the first time. So oh I will have about 26 people in my house. Wow. Yes. I have never done 26 people in my house. <laughs> not, it's we'll one of our biggest parties. We've never done 26 people. Good luck on that one. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Are you so. um, 
sticking to the turkey uh, cuisine strictly alone? It's, uh, you know what? I, we have so many different aspects of the family to please with, uh, you know, side dishes and meal, re ethnic meals or regional meals. Um, you know, there's, there's a southern contingent of the family, which is going to bring a dressing, and there's a northern contingent, which will bring a stuffing and uh, all the different vegetables that they're used to eating. So it, it's going to be quite the smorgasbord. I would think uh, keeping the kitchen in an orderly fashion when there's 26 people must be very difficult. It's going to have to be some kind of assembly line. I, I can't imagine us sitting down and passing dishes. For well, everybody. as I pour another glass of the Chardonnay, I, maybe I could give you some advice that maybe I've tried this myself a few times. I'll take it because this Would is Would you ever think of pre-cooking the turkey the day before and slicing it up and then reheating it or serving it mm, at room temperature? That's a good idea. Now, I, I always thought that carving the turkey was actually part of the, you know, there was a, a kind of a theatrical presentation component to that where, mm -hmm. you know, everybody comes down, sits down and watches as the, cur the turkey gets carved. That doesn't possibly seem to work. I mean, how could you possibly carve a turkey in enough time to serve 26 people? It's a, it's a performance piece. I, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, just it's, it's the, the keynote of the entire meal. That's what's, everybody sits down and they see you carve the turkey and they go, okay, now it's time to eat. What is your opinion on just having a breast? Do you like the legs too? I've done that before. Um, but I, I think that when you just do the breast, there are people who like having dark meat, and, and, you know, some of the wines that we tasted tonight are going to pair better with, That's the, a good point. with the fattier dark meat. So I think you're robbing people if you just go with the breast. Yeah, I actually should emphasize that I am a big fan of dark meat, both in chicken and a turkey. The thing with turkey is the dark meat is best hot yep. right out of the oven. Yep. Um, sometimes it doesn't hold up as well a few days. And both these reds, along with even the rosé and the Riesling, I think would go very well with dark. Absolutely. Yeah, the, um, after the Girard... The Chardonnay is tasting very weak right now, um, and I, I, yeah, if I'm, I'm imagining tasting the dark meat, and I don't think it would pair that well with the dark meat. The Chardonnay definitely tastes differently that it's been sitting out a yeah. little bit, warming up a little bit, but it's not bad. No, not it's bad not a all. bad wine at all. I, I'm still going to give this a thumbs up for Thanksgiving. And I will say that's, when it comes to white wines and me, and I think from some of our viewers, the thing with the white wine is when you have it in a glass, unless you like it a particular temperature, you have to drink it at a certain speed limit. Because if you don't, sometimes it's going to not taste as good yeah. after sitting I, in a glass. I have found a wine toy that I'm going to bring onto a future show. Um, it's a, something you put into the freezer, chill it, and then you slip it into the wine glass. And it's sort of like putting an ice cube into the wine glass, except it doesn't melt and water down the wine. So I, you know, I, I'm always shocked when people ask for ice in their wine. I've seen it. I hate in it. fact, yeah, at the gala last night, uh, a couple, last week, someone asked, for a glass of wine with ice in it, and I, I was horrified, but I, I, I had to serve her. Yeah. Uh, but I told her, I said, there's a device, a little toy you can get. Uh, I'll bring this on one of the future shows. Um, it'll chill the wine for you, give you that same cool experience without watering the wine down. Yeah, and that's a big deal. You know, you got to serve what people like, especially when you're, you know, you have family, friends, or guests over. But please, no ice cubes in the wine, please. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. But that makes us seem like wine snobs, doesn't it? You know, we sometimes are wine snobs, Jim. <laughs> we just have to accept the fact. We try so hard not to be wine snobs on this show, but we are. You know, the thing is, when it comes to being a wine snob, I don't think we, uh, we're not wearing the bow tie and a tie and smoking a pipe. So until such time, we are casual wine snobs. <laughs> well, and you know, is, we're going to have a bow tie on for the next episode. So, Jim, I want to give you a toast. Congratulations and thank you for yes, being my one year. cohort. Thank in you for talking me into this. And drinking 40 some odd <laughs> bottles of wine talking about it to uh, our West Hartford viewers and Hartford viewers soon. And um, once again, I'd like to tell everybody that thanks again for showing up for the West Hartford Gala, mm -hmm. celebrating the great job that West Hartford Television does and both for the town, the community, and all the producers, all the TV shows, all of you. This is also for you too, not just yeah, for us. We, we're really happy to be part of the WHC TV family. So for me and Jim, once again, thanks. I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And until next time, keep us in, in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.